Hello, my name is Dominic Underhall House and welcome to another episode of Moonbreaker. In today's episode, we're going to be doing the final edition of our list building with Astra. So it's part three of three and we can, you know, see if the tweaks we've made, the changes have made this into you know, the list that we want to be playing at this point in time. Now, funny enough, it has shifted very heavily towards an aggressive list. I was actually thinking about this before. If we look at best list ever, it's very, very similar to the one that we got given previously. So we are missing Taria, Rickety, and I think, I think Antios. I think other than that, we're, yeah, we're only actually three units different. So we've gone for Stitchy, I think Detonia on there, and I can't remember who the other one was. Either way, we're very, very close to one of the competitive lists. I like this just having Stitchy in there as a little bit of longevity. It might even be the case we should just be going all in on the aggressive front, but I'm perfectly happy with this for now. So for now, we're going to jump into another game and you know, have a bit of fun with it. If you've been enjoying this series, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, join us over on Patreon. At the time of recording this, we've nearly, nearly got to 300 subscribers, so it means so much if we could just tip that over the edge. We may have reached it by now, in which case, thank you to all of you who have done. And if you want to support the channel, please do subscribe anyway. Or there is also the Patreon description down below, and we've got our first bit of Patreon exclusive content up there, which is more games with our Zuna control list from the other day. So hopefully you guys are going to be able to support the channel in whatever way that you can. And for now, I'll see you in the game. Okay, we have found ourselves a game. We are against... Oh, is this the Gloom Side Sax? Looks like maybe a slightly different version. Uh, Leg Simo is who we're going to be playing against. This, I think, is the Gloom Side Sax version. I remember thinking when I first saw it, uh, because Zax is obviously a hologram, I like to think of this as just night mode Zax. Rather than like Gloom Side, it's just Zax in night mode. So, we've just got an objective, one in the middle, so this is going to be a hard one to fight over for points. Uh, and as you can see, our list is all the way along here for anyone who's interested. And to be completely honest, I think we're just best off trying to be defensive here. We're going to just move forwards. Uh, anything to take a shot at? We might as well take a shot here, because this might be relevant later on. And Deadeye can get onto the point, but not safely. And to be honest, they can get onto that point very easily. So we're just going to hide back here, uh, because I think we need to basically stay safe as much as possible, and stick a Sphere down so we can make those moves next turn. Nice and easy turn, first of all. I imagine they're going to play either a Maximus or a Deadeye. They are the go-to one-drops. I am actually really looking forward to getting new units in the game, so I think at some point we should be able to figure out, you know, some more options for interesting early drops. Uh, I do think as well in the, in the current experimental version, I think some of the one-drops have become two-drops anyway, so we'll just greet our opponent. So, you know, there is a bit of change coming on that front as well. I do think one-drops are a really good thing to have in the game. It gives a lot of options, but I think they do need to be a little bit more... Uh, restrictive. I mean, these are very, very powerful for one drops by most game standards, especially Deadeye and Maximus. It's just Antios and well, Antios and Stitchia may be right because they require a bit of investment to go with, and they don't have that early damage output. But definitely think there should be a, a bit of a change on the others. Okay, so opponent is here. That's good. For a moment there, I was worried they were going to uh, not be in the game. Okay, so they are moving towards us. The interesting thing, we are going to try and destroy these cinder piles early on because Zax can really use them against us, hence why we, we poked this basically. Because Zax can just go ahead and deal a ton of damage immediately. Okay, so Stitchy is an interesting one here. If they play this here, that gives us potentially a chance to try and score, uh, to try and get some damage onto. Uh, oh, it's Maximus, not Deadeye. Okay, that's good for us. They did our job for us. So, how far can we move here? Astra can move all the way over there, so can we get... Yeah, so Deadeye can get a good chunk of damage in here, so... We may as well ozo ourselves here. Take this shot. Uh, get Astra in over here. We're going to deploy Broken Vengeance again, just a little bit safer, back in this direction. Unfortunately, we don't quite have enough to use our... Uh, uh, what's it called? Release Ozos again. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this shot here, I'm going to move back in this direction, and then increase the accuracy for Astra and just go for this. There we go. So we've got that down to one. We can place a defensive, or not defensive, like a fairly safe Cinder Sphere there. As you notice, so a lot of players don't realize this, but pressing the tab button lets you basically cycle between units with activations left. So you'll always see me doing this at the end, just 
hitting that button a few times and trying to clear that up. So they're probably going to use something here to try and get a bit of value out of Zax. I would be very surprised if they didn't heal Maximus, but that's why we wanted to put as much damage on as possible, because now we can deal with it a little bit easier on this next turn with the units that we've got. So, yeah, this is fine. There's there's not really much else for them to do with their Cinder, so finding a good use of Grav Disc is fine. What I'd probably do if I was them is either pull out and try and shoot something, or I would actually just shoot us and then try and pull yourselves into a safe position. So they've got a couple of options there, which is quite interesting for them as well. Looking at this, I think next turn we could be looking at maybe going for... Okay, if they're going for Deadeye, we might be able to make Deadeye safe is the thing. Because if we can kill Maximus, they've only got that to deal with, and this actually puts us being alive, depending on what else they play. Missing that is awkward for them, but not a big deal, because we've got enough movement to get in range with multiple units. And to Jailbreak, okay. What's the hurry? Interesting. So the question is, do we just go all in on Jailbreak? And we can do 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we can actually kill Jailbreak here. And to be honest, that's probably what we do. We just need to make sure we use our Cinder efficiently. So we need to pose those here. Shoot this. And then we need to get this shot off here. Move into this direction. Into the breach again. Take this shot. Uh, I think we want to save the Cinder Sphere, so we'll just move back here for now. Dead, I can finish this off. And to be honest, they've got four range damage there anyway, so we want to hide with Dead Eye. But what do we want to do with the rest? I actually think Stitchy and Tonia could be a really good combination here, but Maximus and Tonia is also a lot of damage. The other option is just blindside at Esli. And I think Esli could be it. I mean, Esli hits super hard. So what if we put it, say, down here? Somewhere just slightly out of the way, relatively safe. I want to try this out. I don't know if this is the right call, but if we can, say, use our Cinder, move on to Astra, activate, move again, between the two of them, they can just one shot Maximus on his own anyway. And we've already got other units that could potentially do that. If they're using their Cinder here, they can they can try and get us to take the Cinder Sphere, that's fine, but if they're just using this to try and get onto Deadeye, then I think we're okay with that as well. That's not even giving them ideal angles either. They're going to have to move all the way around this way with Zax to get two clear of them. Okay, so this is almost guaranteed. That's fine. So we are almost definitely losing Deadeye here. Zax has probably got a pretty reasonable shot as well. Yeah, 95. 1 in 20 they miss. But that's a very aggressive positioning from them. So, actually, if we spend all of our Cinder and still have this available, we can one-shot a couple of things here. We can actually do a ton of damage. If they deploy behind Maximus, we can probably kill Maximus. Oh, they can't take the Cinder Sphere there, so... He is fine by us. That's their own instinct. So, if we can spend our Cinder well, we can deal with this. Yep, that's fine. This is good for us. I like this. We can kill Maximus and potentially kill Esli as well. So we need to spend our Cinder first. So, oh no, we don't have enough ways of spending it. Oh no, we're actually going to struggle here. <laughs> That's really funny. We've already got three ways of spending it because we lost our Deadeye. So in that case, how do we do this? So this we would chain back and forth. So if we hit here first, then we've got three and three. What if we just did this first? So came here and shot. Okay, we'll shoot here. We'll into the breach. We'll Do we have the range for this? No. So here we have to go for the chain. So we are going to take six back, which is really awkward. Because we can't quite get away with this. We're going to need to protect that somehow. I don't know if we're going to have enough resources to do so. So they've got Stitchy back there, so... Uh, let's go with Drum Dance Itali and just try and block some of this up. Place the Cinder Sphere down, and also just place ourselves into Tonia over here. And we'll move blindside just straight up in this direction. 
Again, this is awkward. We've probably got fairly reasonable lines of sight here, but it's better than nothing. Yeah, they can just try and get onto Broken Vengeance fairly easily. But we've got a lot of units here. We've got... Well, we've got four to their two. They can kill one of ours fairly easily, but I do think they're going to be able to do so here. Also, them stealing the cinder from us doesn't really matter. It was all just here to make lines of sight awkward. But if they can just move into this little gap here and get it, then that's fine. Uh, mine's probably not the right choice. There we go. That's where they want to be looking at. But if they're going here, I mean, maybe at this point... Oh, we've got Talali. We did... Yeah, no, of course we played Talali. That was the whole point of playing Talali, so we can try and activate Esli. And maybe even get the kill this turn if, we, if they don't play this correctly. So are they going to try and go for Broken Vengeance here? They are. Okay. So can we get an angle where everything can work here as planned? Because if so, we actually have lethal here if our opponent hasn't realised that yet. So just don't place the mine there. No. Oh. Uh, if they're running away, sure. So maybe they do know. So how do we do this? Okay, so if we just pop over to say... How far can we move? I think if we go here, we should be able to get onto Astra. Onto this Astra. Yeah, we can. Okay, so... We're going to pop over here. We're going to attack here. Astra will take this shot. Go into the breach. We're going to come over here. We'll go for a big chunk of damage there. We'll take a chunk of damage into here. And then we run and hide with that. Uh, Tlali can just come and hit this, I think. I don't think we need to do anything extra with that. And then maybe just move in this direction. And Detonia doesn't really have anything to do, but we just want to try and put a bit more damage out here. Honestly, I think we're going to just go with Maximus over here and Amplified Vital as well. Just somewhere over here. Uh, Astra can move, so I think we're going to move over here and just try and block movement avenues. And Detonia can just spread out in this direction. Sure. So their shrapnel is going to be able to good, do a good amount of damage, but we've got so much pressure onto them here. They've got six potential damage, so they can't actually even kill Blindside or Esli if they go for it. So in theory, we should be able to finish this this turn. Okay, they've got the heal. But Esli's going to be able to hit the seven, and then we've got four here, three here, two from Detonia. Yeah, they have to kill this as well, so if they don't kill shrapnel, then they can't win anyway. Maybe they want to try and move block or grav disc, but we've got a huge amount of movement here that might just make it work. We can obviously have the double activation of this. We've got a few routes into trying to go for victory here. So, Ooh, flurry, okay. But if they don't have anything else here, depending on where they place a mine, the mine could be the big difference here. Because if they have a mine that can block us in place, grav disc I don't think does it. I think they need to try and... Actually, I don't think they can do it with a mine. I think they need to try and get a bit lucky with a grav disc here. Yeah, I think this is going to be a struggle for them. Uh, I think their best bet might be trying to drag grab this behind here, but again, we've got so much movement. Yeah, mine it is, but that's not going to do the job. And I think we've uh, beaten our opponent. Oh, if they could have enough movement, they could have potentially gone here. So, we need to basically trigger as many things as we can to make this work. So, we send Bytel into here. Maximus in here just to chip away all the damage that we can. And move it further this way. We're going to move. Uh, Astra can move over there, so that's fine. We're going to move into here. Go for four damage. We'll get Astra into here. Go for two damage. Into the breach. Four damage. And clear this all up. There we go. I did. I always keep forgetting that we have to put in effort to activate the uh, the passive blindside recipe. It used to be the case that, you know, it's just fairly easy to achieve. Now it's much more difficult with the units you got, but that was a fast, fast win. So, really, really happy with how that went. Let's see how our XP is looking. Anyone close to leveling up? Stitchy's getting close to level 5. Daylight's getting close to 8. We're nearly at the first borders. I, feel, I still can't believe that Deadeye is above Maximus. And we, we're looking at getting those, uh, those what's it called, the banner, uh, banner crests. There we go. 
and that's our opponent's list in case you're interested well so all in all I think this has worked really well I've liked this list it's been a lot of fun I think Stitchy is one of the ones that's I'm still um and ahhing about because it's not quite on theme with the rest of the list but I really like it Detonia again useful but we don't always have the spare cinder and sometimes we have too much so it kind of makes this sort of combo awkward Clarly and Esdly because if we can't get Esdly all the way up but then sometimes it still just hits for three damage with Pumble if we go for it so I think that's a good list I think you guys have hopefully ooh account level up hopefully like learned a little bit about how I like to build astralists we will at some point look at doing some more defensive lists or things with a bit of variety but for now I want to thank you so much for watching if you've enjoyed this please don't forget to like comment subscribe join on the patreon in the description down below and for now if there's anything you want to see on the channel don't hesitate to drop it in the comments I'd really really appreciate the feedback I'm always looking for new ideas I've got plenty of them but more is always helpful so for now thank you so much for watching and most importantly have a good day